Hi, this is Rob Abbo. I thought I'd shoot another video. Today I'm doing a little brain tanning. Uh, I picked up some hides last week. This is the uh, start of the New York bow season about three weeks ago. Uh, I got a nice large one here that's been in the buck, uh, which is basically wood, ash, and water. I use a derivative. It's called KOH, and it's wood, ash, uh, concentrate. You just dump it in the water. It keeps the hide a little cleaner. You can see the nice blue color. That's what you're looking for is the hide to be swelled up. The only thing I did to this hide so far was put it in the flushed it on my flushing beam here. As you can see it's a little slippery on the PVC. But we're going to get it up and I'm going to show you how to flush it hot, or uh, I'm sorry, how to dehair and degrain a hide today. So, you want this about mid stomach height here. And I'm using an old uh, planing uh, knife. No, planing, uh, well, you get the idea. It's a piece of metal and it's sharp. So what we're going to do is the hair should slip out of this. And if you come up close, you can see this. Uh, the hair comes right out. But what the part that we want to get rid of is this grainy part here. You can see it looks uh, somewhat, it's usually hard to see on video, but other guys have got it on video also. There's a grain part there. And what you want to do is get that off. You can see that that piece right here is a grain and you can see where it came off the hide. This is why you want to swell the hide so that this grain layer is raised. Now you can see that line going right down here and you just need to make sure you get everything, every last piece of grain off. Every once in a while I will not get all the grain off that's okay too you still work out on your tanning process but it gives it a little bit of character and design this hide will probably be going up uh, for sale in the spring sometime it does not have a single hole in it um, right now I want to get it situated where it's not flopping all around uh, usually what I do is I get to the tail end to the neck and then I do a line straight down to the neck and then right to the tail and then one across each side to do it in the quarters and that usually works well now you have to decide which quarter you want to start with the neck is the toughest part to get off especially on big bucks um, you don't want your tool here too sharp a uh, good rule of thumb is to have it dull enough that you can run your finger down without cutting yourself. If you get it too sharp, like I did the first hide I actually did, it uh, put holes in the hide, and that you don't want that. This hide actually has not one single hole in it. It was a neck shot archery, and that part of the hide is already off, so this one should be ideal. Uh, I do have another one. Uh, in the works it's only got one single hole in it and it's about the same size these are pretty large hides uh, as you can see I'm getting up to the neck it's gonna sound a lot tougher and it gets a lot tougher so it's up to you whether you want to knock that out right off the beginning or if you want to wait till the end after you get some uh, experience and know what you're looking for but sometimes it just doesn't want to come off I'll, I can throw it back in a buck again, and I usually do to make sure that that buck, that buck takes the mucus out of the fibers so that it will allow the brain to penetrate. If you don't get that mucus out, it's not coming out. Now, that's pretty tough right there, so I'm going to leave that last inch and come back to that. You can see again where I went right down to hide and off to either side. There's some grain, and you would just start working that, just like this. This is the first time I've ever done this on PVC pipe. My old wooden flushing beam rotted out and broke. 
so I had to go with this one. Um, very simple to do, but this is going to take me probably two, three hours to get this all done correctly, and then I'll go back over to the other side and make sure I got all the grain, or not the grain, I'm sorry, the membrane, and flesh off of that side, because you don't want that on there. And again, if you, you don't get it all off, it's not a big deal. Your hide's still going to come out. You just might have to work it a couple times. You can see how much easier the grain comes off the back and um, the hide here compared to the neck. And on an old buck, it's even worse. Sometimes I'll just start working a buck and the whole hide seems like that. I just turn it into raw hide and use it for other projects. So, once again, it's going to take me two or three hours of hard work on this. I already put about 45 minutes into it. Not an easy process for the faint of heart. If you want to do this kind of thing, it is rewarding. I'm the type of person I can sit here and and do this and it doesn't bother me some people want to just have me do it for them because they don't want to take the time um, not a hard process but it is physical uh, the best book I have read on on it so far is Matt Richards uh, buckskin the brain tan and that's the method I use I've seen some on paleo planet site uh, you can really get a good look at the green here if it's not showing up on it you can see that good line that's what you want to get off the height will be a hundred percent lighter too when you get that done make sure your PVC pipe is at the right height it gives you instead of bending over stoop that'll kill your back and this way you can work right to the end and work the grain right off the end of the hide another little trick I saw somebody using was they put down one of their kids sleds here to catch the hair and then you just pile it all into a garbage bag or take it out to a, a pile in the back um, but that's the messiest part about this is the uh, hair. I got two dogs and get around someplace. And they will get into it. There's one over there now. Uh, it's deer. They like the smell of it. They like to hang out around it while it's being done. But here I'm going to take and work my X pattern in. And then I'll have to do that on the other side. And then this will be... Oh, this is a stubborn eye. Here we go. Okay, this will quarter it up. You can go on any uh, tanning website for a regular tan and pick up one of these cheap aprons for about 10 15 bucks. I'm telling you, it's worth it. You don't have to get all wet. I used to get wet and in the summer. That's not bad, but I usually like to do this part and get this out of the way brain them and then get them in the freezer and so in the spring when it gets warm enough I can start to stretch them out again this is green and real nice except for that neck so I might choose to do the neck first since that's the hardest work and then have myself an enjoyable time on the rest of it it is very very slippery when it's bucked like this it's almost like a piece of rubber but that's what you want. And again, my first attempt I used, I used to use the wood ashes, and that's great. Uh, that Matt Richards on his site sells a KOH, a wood ash derivative, and that works even better. It keeps your hide really clean, and you are not getting ash all over the place. Uh, and it's the same mixture every single time. It just get okay. Get myself a little screwed up here with that line. Okay. Another thing, you can just get a cheap pair of gloves. Uh, after I get this done, I'm heading over to my friend's automotive shop and I'm going to weld together a brazier. Maybe if I get that done and come back, I'll post another video of the first fire in my homemade brazier. Explain how I made that and uh, give you another little project that you can work on. Well, I'm going to say let you guys go right now and uh, if I do get the brazier I'll save this. I'll show you the whole thing when after it's done. Again, this is Rob Abbo from eBay Sales. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching.